Hello, my friends. It's Monday afternoon, about 12.40 p.m. my time here. Just finished having a nice hour and a half with my wife. Our son's out with his nanny on an adventure somewhere. We were doing some budgeting, which was uh, nice. We made a list of all the stuff we want, all stuff we want to buy. You know, small things, things for the house. And then we went through each thing and we said, zero to ten, like how important is this for each of us? And we just kind of agreed on a number. And then we talked talked about, we gave each thing like, oh, well, when do we want this? Then we sorted the list and we were like, okay, this feels good. Because we've been arguing a little bit about, not really arguing, but just like bickering about like how important this is versus that. And so one of the principles that like I kind of created or came to when I got married that was like, the idea, just welcoming the idea that I'm never going to live my dreams now that I'm married because my dreams are mine and now I've got this other person and never really feeling satisfied with the idea of an economy of dreams, a little bit of your dream, a little bit of my dream and we kind of trade off and balance and life is this kind of equitable, balanced, economic, rest, you know, trade. That didn't really work. That didn't inspire me. So I, um, Calvin and I decided to give up our dreams completely and dream anew. So that's kind of been how we've done everything. So this is kind of like giving up on what we want and trying to prioritize it in our opinion, but then just saying, coming together and being like, well, what's what's your zero to 10? She's like, mine's an eight. And I was like, well, mine's like a three. So, okay, let's average it. What is that, like five? And so we weighted everything as the average of our wants. And then we sorted the list and we said, okay, this is the order we're going to do it. And it felt good. So we just bought her a new iPhone. Um, I've got a deep freezer we're going to buy. What else? Um, gonna get uh, oh yeah a new stroller for the baby stuff like that anyway so it was nice to go through that little process and to feel really connected afterwards Um, I'm just looking up at the window because she's sitting there looking through her wine book I love her so much my wife is so amazing I think I might have shared if not I'll share it well anyway I'll mention she's been studying wine for six years Um, largely that was bobbing and weaving through the period of time in which she was giving birth to our son. Um, you know, breastfeeding, child care, all that, but still not tasting when she was breastfeeding, but, you know, finding her way with it, doing the book work. And she finished uh, there like end of last year and she scored second highest in the world in her wine degree. And she was honored in London on stage and given an award and a bursary to do wine studies and travel the world studying wine, given her, basically gave her like uh, five grand or something like that. Um, and now she's starting a wine business and I'm pretty excited for her and also pretty good chance she'll retire me financially anyway. I love my work, I'll always do it, but the idea of not having to make money and just continuing to do what I love and have time for the family sounds pretty awesome. And so I have a good, I have a pretty strong feeling that she's gonna be super financially successful. Her wine business is gonna, she's gonna teach people how to taste wine online so you get some videos and then wine shows up at your house and you learn how to taste wine you're more comfortable and confident going into a restaurant going into a wine store knowing what you like knowing how to talk about wine and uh, I think there's lots of people that are going to want that plus she's sexy and hot and listening to her talk in a British accent people probably will be paying just for that which hey whatever that whatever works I'm happy for that too um, that's not what I intended to talk about today, but here we are. So why, what did I want to share? I wanted to share, um, look at this stuff. This is, I bought some dirt, organic patio plus premium outdoor potting mix. I've never grown, hey, what's up, Darren? I've never grown uh, vegetables before. If anybody on this thread knows anything about gardening, if you're here live, let me know right now. We can chat about it. Um, or if you uh, watch the replay and you have tips or suggestions for somebody who's a straight up beginner. I mean, my mom grew stuff when I was a kid, mostly like flowers and stuff. I don't really remember vegetables. So we've got some pots coming, we've got some soil, we've got some seeds. I think water, sun, is that it? I mean, I'm sure there's a lot more to it. Um, so why? You know, it's a project for my son, wanting him to grow up around food growing. I remember discovering when I was like 10 or 11 that, you know, food had seasons 
I just didn't I didn't know that because at the grocery store everything's always there all the time so I didn't realize that because stuff's imported but um, so I want him to grow up around the experience of food being born from the ground from a seed and then eating it and uh, and I also just want to learn like look we were in this lockdown for what six weeks eight weeks now um, all those disaster planning things you think ah well I really need that someday well I didn't think there'd be a pandemic would be locked in our house so what's my wilderness training like so how am I going to survive you've grown some herbs awesome Darren haha <laughs> funny so I like to think it would be useful to know how to grow food right hunt and kill grow vegetables in case I ever have to like, take care of my family in the wilderness it might sound like silly but at the same time maybe not because things can change quickly so it's part of learning for myself and it's part of giving my son a little project and something to experience uh, so open for suggestions and tips thinking of uh, you Leanne Mallet right now too uh, I don't know if you garden but I, you, I imagine you'd be somebody that would know a lot about this with your connection to the earth um, what else yeah just been having fun going for runs working out playing with Asher we had a lovely weekend together as a family went on some walks we've been going for walks a lot at the cemetery nearby which has been great my friend and client Kate sent me a book that's a kid's book about death and dying she's done a great music album about that in a TED talk and it's a book I thought would be great to read for Asher but there's not really any context for death yet but actually taking him to the graveyard has been great because he's been walking on the gravestones and we've been asking him not to and then trying to explain to him why and telling him there's people under there and you might wake them up but then he's like how come they're not waking up and now so you can't just joke you got to be kind of straightforward but the more straightforward you are the more awkward and uncomfortable it is so it's like okay let's figure this out let's just be straight with him about death and talk to him about it and let's let me grab that book and start reading it to him and um, not wait for somebody that we know close to us to die but to actually just talk about it now uh, and I think that could be good for me too actually to be in the throes of the death conversation not just in my own self reflections but with other people who might be afraid of it or not understand it you know he was at one moment saying oh when mommy dies can we get one of these stones for her just like out of nowhere not when daddy dies or when I die but when mommy dies and she counted, was like oh geez and so it's like so yeah 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 and then we start talking about sure we can get one for her when she dies it's not going to be for a while for then it's like I don't want mommy to die and then it's like it flipped from this funny thing to this like, scary thing so all of a sudden he started to get afraid and I think that's the direction of the conversation that could serve both of us for me to help him to relax but also for me to confront the actuality of death I think it's I'm so much more relaxed subconsciously than I was throughout this the beginning of this pandemic I've been consciously relaxed the whole time but I think unconsciously I was more it was a background anxiety with uh, the COVID and stuff where I've been a lot I'm more relaxed I'm sleeping better uh, because I started to look at death and contemplate it and just embrace the possibility um, even though it's remote, it doesn't matter. It's not rational. It's there. And so uh, it would be good to continue that path. Deepak Chopra was this morning on Instagram talking about death. I'm so interested in him, but then I listen and I get so bored so fast. I, I don't know. I feel like he takes a long time to say things that are really simple, which is probably great for people who don't spend an inordinate amount of time like myself reading about these things. But uh, I'm going to keep coming back to his work because I, I feel like there's there's some juice there for me also there's there's a lot of he holds a place of projection for my judgment which is really useful for me to lean into I've leaned into that a lot so the idea of being a spiritual guru who's out there in the world telling people how they can have a better life you know that's what I do in some ways too but like really being the spiritual guru the yoga guy I had judgment about him being like all this money and with hot sexy women all the time and it's like oh wow I'm judging that because there's some fear of being judged in that myself and so by kind of looking at that and reflecting on it and staying with it I've kind of relaxed around it but I could still use some more time around him what's up Tito Uve look at that man oh can I show you Tito ripping up my skin lately man on the workouts I haven't been able to lift since I did that one it's really painful but I have to say, Tito, Arnold Tyron here, my friend Tito, you keep me going, you know, like a big thing that was so great for me in CrossFit is creating a community of people. I know you said the same that kept me showing up and and engaged my competitive side that pushed me beyond where I might work out on my own. 
And in the beginning of this pandemic, I was really concerned that not having that would mean that I wouldn't work out at all. But just a little bit of technology. My watch dings two or three times a day when Tito, hey, look at that, Jeff just finished a workout. When Tito finishes a workout, I find out, I see how many calories he burned, which is always a pretty huge chunk. And it keeps me thinking about him and our relationship and his commitment is an intensity, which gets, and as I think about him in that, I feel that, and then that, that, that feeds me. So I work out because you work out and a couple of my other friends, right? Steve and I, my friend Steve Sweeney, we're in a little Apple Watch competition. So I can, you know, his calories versus my calories throughout the week. And even though I don't get to see you guys, I'm still with you uh, quite often because of the tech, which I think is so cool. Technology, man, people like want to fight it, but don't fight it, it's fucking coming. You know, you don't have to like go right back to the wilderness. It's like integrate it, roll with it. People are going to evolve. We're gonna have a neural network inserted into our brains at least in the next hundred years and maybe in even our lifetime, maybe our kids, maybe our kids' kids. So I'm all for integrating and moving forward. And it's like, bring presence to that. Let's go with it. So uh, my phone is attached to me. That's not a problem unless I disassociate from the impact that it's having. Like, how can we make this work? How can we make it work? And so I love the tech. I love using it as a way to create more presence and more connectedness, connecting with my friends, especially in times like these. Look. The sun is still shining. It's still a beautiful day. We can still be outside. So much of the freedom that's being taken from us through technology and through governmental changes is relative to what we think things should be and how they should be. And I'm not saying don't fight for freedom. I'm saying don't be too quick to assume that freedom looks like anything in particular. A lot of it's, most of it, I'm a freedom junkie, but most of it to me, 99% of it is about how I think about things. Last thing I'll share, I'm just musing here with you guys. I hope that's cool. Um, I've been saying, I've found a lot of peace in the certainty that I'm not certain about anything in this time of the pandemic, which is true. A lot of it also has been just stepping back and having me like, not only do I know, not know what's gonna happen, nobody knows what the fuck's going on. Everybody's got a different opinion. And it's the moment I find myself being agitated with somebody, that's because my foot is nailed to the floor, as Werner Erhard may have said at one point. My foot's nailed to the floor. I can't be pissed at you unless I'm stuck in a position. And so any agitation I feel about Trump or this conspiracy or that, I mean, there's so many conspiracy theories where this conspiracy theory thinks that that conspiracy theory is wrong and they think that's wrong. It's like, fucking hell. So I'm get this space of opinions, opinionlessness is where the most relaxation is. And it's not running away. It's not evasiveness. It's not acquiescence. It's not some docile nature. It's saying, hey, look, what's going on right now? There's a butterfly right there. The sun's shining. It's not cliche. It's just fucking true. Like all the time people stress out, and I know this from firsthand experience about what's going on in the world. They miss stuff like that. They miss stuff like this. Their kids are trying to talk to them and they're too busy worrying about what might happen 10 years down the line to not even be there. When I say people, I mean me. Letting go of all of it, coming right back to here, being in the moment. Like, why waste time being stressed about a pandemic when if it comes, it's still sunny out and there's still butterflies. Anyway, I'm sharing and philosophizing and I love you guys for being here. Dawn, thank you for being here again. Um, I'm going to sign out now. I'll see you guys next week. Let me know if you were here on the comments, if you watch to the end. Super cool. Love you. Bye for now.